Hello friends, this video on squares and square roots part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now you might be curious to know the concept behind this trick because we did something. We divided by 2, we squared and, and then we finally arrived at the result. But why did we do all of that? So it is important to know how are we applying this trick. That is also important. So let's try to understand the concept behind the trick. So let us first talk about the odd triplets like the odd numbers so in fact we already found out the members of some of the odd triplets so let's take some examples of odd triplets 3 4 5 5 12 13 19 180 181 these are some examples of pythagorean triplets where the smallest member is the odd number right because we, we are trying to find out the concept behind the trick for odd numbers first so here we will do for odd and here we will do for even. Okay, the odd ones first. So here if you observe all the triplets, do you see something in common? So one common thing that you see here is in every triplet, the difference between two numbers is one. So you see in the first triplet anyways, the difference between all the three numbers is one. But in the second triplet, you see the difference between 12 and 13 is one. In the third triplet, the difference between 180 and 181 is one, right? So in all the triplets where the smallest member is, uh, is an odd number, the difference between the other two members is equal to one. So that means, let's say that you are given an odd number let us say that that odd number which is given to you is a because right now we are trying to find out the generalized formula just to tell you that how that trick came from where did we get this pick get that trick so let's say that the given number given odd number is a and we have to find out the remaining two members of the pythagorean triplet so we can very well say that let us assume that this first unknown number is x so if the first unknown member is x what would be the other unknown member the other unknown member would be one more than this member that is that is what we have been seeing in all the triplets that the one member and th that the difference between the two unknown members is always one so this third member would be x plus one so if this is x this would be x plus one so now when you look at this you have a which is the given value x and x plus 1 so now if these three are forming a pythagorean triplet then they should satisfy the relationship of pythagorean triplet that is sum of the squares of the two numbers should be equal to the square of the third number so here this is the biggest number right because a we know that the given number is always the smallest member so out of x and x plus 1 obviously x plus 1 is bigger so therefore we can say a square plus x square should be equal to x plus 1 whole square right so this let's try to solve this so therefore we can say a square plus x square is equal to this is a plus b whole square so x plus 1 whole square is x square plus 1 square plus 2 into x into 1 so this would be a square plus x square is equal to x square plus 1 plus 2x therefore we can say that so this x square and this x square will get cancelled so you get a square is equal to 1 plus 2x or you can say 2x is equal to a square minus 1 so I'm just solving a simple algebraic equation so I'm sure all of you know how to solve algebraic equation. If you have forgotten, please refer to the lesson on algebraic equation. So therefore, x is equal to a square minus 1 divided by 2. So therefore, we can say x is equal to a square by 2 minus 1 by 2. And this is what we are actually doing. What we have been doing to find out x. So first we square the given number, right? So the given number is a. So first we square the given number that is we find out a square. Then we divide it by 2. So we find out a square by 2. And in the third step what we do? We take the whole number immediately before that number. So that whole number for example in this case while finding out the values of uh, the 4 and 5 in this triplet what in the calculation if you go back to the calculation you would see that 
In this case, the value that you had obtained for a square by 2 was 4.5. So 4.5 was located between 4 and 5. So what we actually did was we subtracted 1 by 2, which is 0 0.5 from 4.5. So we got 4. Again, we added 0 0.5 to 4.5. So we found 5. So to find x, we are actually doing a square by 2 minus half. So therefore, what would be x plus 1? x plus 1 would be a square by 2 minus 1 by 2 plus 1. Right? So therefore, overall, what do we get? So our final result is x is equal to a square by 2 minus half and x plus 1 is equal to a square by 2 plus half. So this is what we have actually been doing with trick 1. So this is how we have derived trick 1. Now instead of memorizing this formula, it is easier to memorize the trick because trick is an easier thing to remember. So you just remember that in three steps and it, it becomes easy for you. So on similar lines, we found out the relationship for even numbers as well. So we will do it for even numbers also here. So let's take some examples of triplets with even numbers like 6, 8, 10, 22, 120, 122. So in this case, what kind of relationship can you derive between the two unknown numbers? So here you see that the difference between the two unknown numbers is always 2. So therefore, if A is the given number in this case, then what can we assume for the two unknown members? So if the, this unknown member is x, then this unknown member would be x plus 2. Therefore, in this case, they should satisfy the relationship a square plus x square is equal to x plus 2 whole square. So this is the only difference here. So now if you solve this, you see that it becomes a square plus x square is equal to x square plus 4 plus 4x. So again, x square, x square will get cancelled. So you get a square is equal to 4 plus 4x. So therefore, a square by 4 is equal to 1 plus x or x is equal to a square by 4 minus 1. So we can say x is equal to a by 2 whole square minus 1. And this is exactly what we have been doing. In this case, instead of squaring a first, we are first dividing a by 2 and then squaring it. And then subtracting 1 to get x and adding 1 to get x plus 2. So for x plus 2, what you will do? a by 2 whole square minus 1 plus 2, which is equal to a by 2 whole square plus 1. So therefore, in this case, what is our final result in for for a given even number so the first unknown member would be x which is a by 2 whole square minus 1 and the second unknown member would be x plus 2 which is equal to a by 2 whole square plus 1 so i think with the you might feel that this is something which was not given in the book. This is something which might not come in your exam. But this is something which you should understand. You just should not blindly follow the trick. So you should know what is there behind the trick. So that, you know, even though you do not need to derive this anytime. But you actually know what's happening. From where are you getting those steps where you are squaring and dividing and adding or subtracting something. So this was the concept behind the trick to find out members of Pythagorean triplet. Now I am repeating once again that this trick is suitable only when you are given a number and you have to make a triplet from that number. But please do not try to verify all existing triplets with this trick because you will not be able to do that because not all existing triplets follow this rule. Okay, so now let's look at what happens to multiples of Pythagorean triplet. So here what we will see is, let's say that you have a Pythagorean triplet 3, 4, 5. So we have seen it for ourselves that 3, 4, 5 forms a Pythagorean triplet. Now what if you have another triplet which is a multiple of 3, 4, 5. So what do we mean by multiple of 3, 4, 5? Let's say that if you multiply this overall triplet by 2, that is you multiply each member of the triplet by 2. Then what do you get? 3 to the 6, 4 to the 8, 5 to the 10. So what is this 6, 8, 10? So does 6, 8, 10 also make a Pythagorean triplet? 
Yes, they do. So any multiple of a Pythagorean triplet is also a Pythagorean triplet. For example, you multiply this entire thing by 3. So this becomes 9, 12 and 15. So 9, 12, 15 also makes, also forms a Pythagorean triplet. Similarly, you multiply it by 4, it becomes 12, 16 and 20. So that is also a Pythagorean triplet. So it is as good as saying that all of these are capable of forming the right angle triangle just that the size of the triangle increases because the length of the respective sides are also increasing. So maybe in this triangle it was 3, 4, 5, here it was 6, 8, 10, here it is 9, 12 and 15 and finally here it is 12, 16 and 20. So that's the only difference but all of these set of three numbers they satisfy the um, rule of Pythagoras theorem. So in all such cases, this one, the basic one is called the primitive triplet. So this would be the primitive triplet and all the multiples of the primitive triplet also form Pythagorean triplet. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.